I can now use Google AI in Home Assistant to search the web absolutely for free. Of course, I can do that with my voice as well and the search request can be for anything. Also, the Google AI can format the result in any style I wish, but the best part here is that I can make a Home Assistant automation and I can use any trigger I want. For example, when motion is detected, ask me, do I want to hear the latest Home Assistant news? I'll move my hand in front of the motion sensor. Do you want to hear the latest Home Assistant news? Yes, please. I'm just thrilled you want to hear about the latest Home Assistant updates. I know you've been just asterisk dying asterisk to hear about them. This video will be a step-by-step -step guide of how you can enable web search in Home Assistant using Google AI at absolutely no cost. But before we continue further, I want to share that I made a PDF that go with this video and you can download it for free. You can get everything that is needed with that PDF in one place with all the links and instructions in a concise and simplified way. To download the PDF, simply click the link in the description, follow this link or scan that QR code. Then you enter your name and your email address you need to confirm your mail so that I know that you are not some kind of a robot and you sign up for my mailing list and the PDF will automatically download to your device. That way you've joined my free PDF club, you automatically receive my weekly articles, news, updates and offers. It is a free service and you can unsubscribe with just one click. Now let's go straight into today's topic how to enable web search in Home Assistant using Google Generative AI. First, Google AI is not available everywhere, but most countries are supported and you can use this page to find your country. If your country is listed here on this page, then you're good to go. I'm currently located in Bulgaria. That means I can use Google AI for free and if you find your country here, you can do that as well. Next thing is to retrieve a Google API key. And this is pretty easy. I need a Google account. If you don't have such, you can open one. It is free and easy. I'll open this link and I'll select my Google account. I will consent with the terms and services and I don't like to receive emails for updates. I'll click on accept and this is the page I want. From here I should click create API key and this will generate my API key that I will use in my home assistant later on the next step. You'll see that. I'll copy this key that is generated and I'll store it somewhere safe don't share this information with anyone. Next step is to set up billing. Don't worry, this will be free eventually at the end, but let's see that. I'll click on set up billing. My country is Bulgaria. I don't want to receive periodic emails and I'll just agree and continue. And I'll go to step two in hope that I'll receive free credit. At this point, you have to verify your identity and you have to add a payment method and you won't be charged unless you activate full pay-as-you-go account as written here. But I found a trick. If I close this, you can try it as well. And it may work, it may not. I don't know if I close this. And if I didn't click on start free, because if I click on start free, it will ask me to add credit or debit card. If I close this and if I refresh this, I'll see that my account is activated and I have a free tire account. As you can see here, the plan is free and I didn't enter my credit card, which is perfect. You can try that trick as well. It may work, it may not, but nothing scary to add your credit card. You won't be charged as Google claimed, and you can go with the free tire. That means I can use the Google API for free with some limitation, for example, 500 requests per day, and my requests will be used for further improvement of this service. This is the difference between free tire and pay tire. Uh, everything is free in the free tire, and I have a limitation of 500 requests per day and my 
data will be used to improve the product. If I go to pay tire, I'll have bigger limitation and my data will not be used for in product improvement. That's the difference between free tire and pay tire. You can decide what tire suits you best. But I choose free tire here and this is how I get it. The most important things here are to get the API key and to set the plan either free or paid. Now I can even test these with this curl request. If you have Linux or Mac, you can copy this and you can substitute this Gemini API key with your real key. And if I paste that in a terminal, let's do that quickly. I'll paste that curl code. You can do that in Windows as well, but first you have to uh, download the curl command because is not available by default. I'll copy and I'll paste my Google API key and I'll hit enter and this will ask the AI, explain how AI works. And it is thinking at the moment. And this is the answer. Look at that. Okay, it is breakdown how artificial intelligence work. And this is the result actually. That means the service is working and I can use this same service in my home assistant, which is very easy. And I'm about to show you how you can do that. I'll open my home assistant. I'll press the C button on my keyboard and I'll type integrations. And then I'll select navigate integrations. I'll add a new one, new integration and I'll search for Google. I'll select Google. Then I'll search for Google Generative AI and I'll click on it and I'll paste the API key. Then I'll click on Submit. And just like that, Google Generative AI is now in my Home Assistant. I can assign it to an area. I can, I can change the name, but I'll skip and finish this. And this is it. I can now configure it by clicking on this configure button. And here I have something important to change. Here is actually I have where I have to enable the web search. I'll untick this recommended mo model settings and I'll click on submit and I'll scroll to the very bottom of this dialog and I'll enable Google search tool. And now if I click on submit, I'll see this error. Google search cannot be enabled alongside any assist capability. This can only be used when assist is set to no control. That means if I want to use this Google search functionality, I have to disable Home Assistant control. But there is a workaround and it is well described in the Home Assistant documentation as well in my PDF. You can download that PDF and you'll find how to avoid this and you have assist functionality, Home Assistant assist functionality and Google search at the same time. But in this demo, I'll disable the assist. That means this integration will not be able to control my Home Assistant devices and entities, but it will be able to search the web and give me the result. And I'm pretty fine with that. From these drop downs, I can disable some limitations. I'll disable them all. That is optional. But again, most important thing here is to disable the assist functionality and to enable the Google search tool. Of course, I can change the model. For example, I can use, I don't know why I have so many flash preview for 17, but I'll choose the first one. It doesn't matter. These models are constantly updated when Google re release new model. This list will be changed as well. Home Assistant take care of these. Home Assistant crew take care of this and they recommend the most appropriate model if you choose the recommended model settings. But again, if you choose the recommended model settings, you can't enable the Google search tool. So click on submit. And now I have everything that is needed to start using Google AI in my Home Assistant, my automations, in my scripts everywhere. Let me show you. I'll press the A button on my keyboard 
Then I'll click on this down arrow and I'll go to manage assistant. Then I'll create a new assistant here. It will be Google AI no control because this conversation agent that I installed is having no control over my home assistant. Of course, the name can be anything. And that's it. I can choose speech to text agent. It can be local or cloud. And because I'm having Nabucasa subscription, I will choose Home Assistant Cloud, but the local options for speech to text, local add ons for speech to text and text to speech are also fine. I'll click on create. And where is this new assistant? This one. I'll make it preferred. That means this will be used by default. And I can test it right away. I can start a conversation and I can type what are the latest soccer results from this week in 20 style and here it is I can limit the result of course Chelsea had a pretty good day Manchester United and so on and so forth of course I can format this and I can ask the AI to format this in any way I wish I can limit the size I can increase the size I can put it in a funny way in an aggressive way anything and that's the beauty of all these things. So let's test another thing more interesting than that. I'll press the C button on my keyboard again and I'll type automations and I'll select navigate automations. I'll create a new one, empty one, new empty automation and I'll select edit in YAML code. Then I'll copy the YAML code from my PDF. You can download this PDF from the link in the video description and I'll replace everything with this code and I just have to click on save. In essential, when motion is detected by this motion sensor, I'll ask the Google generative AI conversation agent to summarize me the most important tennis news into short sentences and to send me a persistent notification here in my home assistant also to say that on my media player which is a home assistant voice pe edition preview edition i'll click on save this is how you can import the yaml code for my pdf i'll just click on rename and my automation is now ready to be used i'm ready to test this automation and i'll move my hand in front of this sensor and I'll wait for the result. Casper Root finally snagged a Masters 1000 title in Madrid, proving that persistence, or maybe just everyone else having an off week, pays off. Meanwhile, Novak Djokovic, in a shocking display of something, withdrew from Rome after an impressive losing streak. And this is it. You heard the result and you can see the result as a text, as a persistent notification. And that is the result coming directly from Google AI, formatted in the way I wish, which is exactly what I wanted. And I can use that on a regular basis. I can use that in any trigger I wish. And it is pretty useful, guys. It can be used for anything, not just for tennis or football news or anything and let's test one more thing that is even more interesting than this test that we just did i'll create one more automation empty one i'll edit this automation in yaml and i'll paste my second automation which is also available in my pdf this automation will ask me it will start the conversation when motion is detected and it will ask me do i want to hear the news and if I say yes, I will actually hear them, which is amazing, guys. I like that functionality, but let's see it in action. I'll save this. And I'll disable the fir first automation because it is having the same trigger. I'm now about to test this Home Assistant automation as well. Let's see what will happen. I'll move my hand in front of the motion sensor. Do you want to hear the latest Home Assistant news? Yes, please.
I'm just thrilled you want to hear about the latest Home Assistant updates. I know you've been just asterisk dying asterisk to hear about them. It's just amazing how they keep adding features for us to explore, as if we didn't already have enough to configure, and someone was so kind to create a new way to complain about things not working as expected. Good. It actually worked, and it was funny. I have to admit that. So this is how you can use Google AI in your home assistant, in your automations and make your smart home even more useful and more funny. And again, you can find all the instructions in a concise and summarized way in my step-by-step -step PDF guide. The link is available in the video description and you can see it on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Kiryu and I'll see you next time. Bye.